The stormy march is come at last, with wind and cloud and changing skies. I hear the rushing of the blast that through the snowy valley flies. Poet William Cullen Bryant wrote those words in 1840 in his poem, March. Since then, some things haven't changed much, including the fickle March weather and the way we still use it as a metaphor for the unpredictable storms and sunshine of life. Here, spring has been arriving timidly, not seeming to decide between showers and sun. We've been enjoying more rain than usual for our part of the world. Stepping in puddles and having fun, rainy walks from school. What you doing? Yeah? Do you know any jokes? Why did the tree get in trouble? Why? Because it was feeling, because it was acting a bit annoying. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Nice. Thumbs up. Hi, friends. I'm Dr. B. And today I have some recommendations for you. One of my favorite things about watching YouTube videos is when creators give me recommendations for books or shows or movies or video games, um, anything I can fill my time with once the things that I'm reading or watching are done. You guys know what I'm talking about. That slump you get after you finish a story. Yeah, I hate those. Welcome to the first installment of what I'm calling What's in My Brain. We're going to start with books, of course. First up, we have my favorite book so far this year, and that's Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson, probably my favorite current author. And Yumi is one of the four secret project books that he was so successful with on Kickstarter. This book is part of the Cosmere series by Sanderson, although it is set in a different world than the other ones that he has released so far. As Sanderson himself explains, this story is more of a romance than what he typically writes. It is still heavily fantasy throughout the book, but it is about a love story that has to overcome really big monumental challenges. One of the things that I really appreciate about the characters is that they are both artists in their own different ways. Yumi is very important in her culture. She is responsible for forging a link between the people of the villages around her and the spirits that give them the things that they need in order to live, in order to survive. And she does that by performing her particular art form, which is stacking rocks. I really love the descriptions 
of what it's like for her to perform her art, how creative it is, how unique her ability to create these forms and structures is and why this would be pleasing in some way to the spirits that she's trying to call forth and also how physically and mentally challenging it is for her to create this art. It really says a lot about the artistic process and how it's tied so closely to everyday life and to survival and to culture. On the other side, we have the nightmare painter who throughout the book is primarily just referred to as painter. And he likewise has an important role in society, but in more of an outcast way. So he and his fellow painters go out at night and basically capture night they track nightmares down because in this particular city or society nightmares are tangible things that can be seen and also that can hurt people use people or feed on people in order to grow and change and become more solid and so what the painters have to do is give form to the nightmares and in that way kind of force them to take a shape that is not threatening or that's beautiful or funny or silly or something like that but despite having this big responsibility painter is becoming pretty disillusioned he's bored as an artist and he no longer takes any risks with his art and we aren't really told at the start why he's so disillusioned why he doesn't try very hard why he only draws or paints stalks of bamboo in order to capture the nightmares so he's basically content with mediocrity even though we get the sense that there's more to him than might meet the eye. The two of them end up meeting under very unusual and confusing circumstances and are kind of forced to put up with each other. They're not necessarily enemies, but they do irritate each other at first. And they end up having to figure out what's going on together to solve the mysteries of their particular worlds and figure out how they can work together to save their respective peoples. It is such a beautiful lyrical story. It does have a lot of action and adventure in true Sanderson style. The writing itself is very lovely and well crafted but it's also very funny and cheeky and has uh, a great narrator that is overseeing the events of the story and commenting on them in funny ways i highly highly recommend it i spent a little more time on that one because it was my favorite of the month and really the year so far but i'm going to move through the rest of my list more quickly there are a couple of books that i have been reading with my six-year-old son at night we just read about a chapter every night one of them is one of my most loved books of all time and that's the hobbit by J.R.R. tolkien we have gotten quite a ways into it he doesn't seem to be very frightened by the events of the book which is great it is uh more tailored toward younger audiences than the lord of the rings which is in many ways the sequels to the hobbit I do own several editions of this book, 
but we have been enjoying this gorgeously illustrated one. The other book we're reading at bedtime is Comet in Moomin Land. Gotta love those Moomins by Tova Jansen. I've never read the Moomin stories, so we are both getting to meet the characters and discover the world of the Moomins together. Finally, the other book that I'm reading with my youngest, we read on the Kindle because we can read it in the dark after turning off the lights. And that's The Borrowers by Mary Norton. Many of you are probably familiar with that book. I am particularly enamored of The Borrower stories because I have an addiction, a love of miniatures. Anything tiny, anything small, I am absolutely here for it. Another book that I finished reading this month is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This was really a great reading month. I had such a good time. The audiobook performance was fantastic. The story was really compelling. I grew so close to the character. That's a key indicator for me of when I'm going to love a book. If I actually feel like I'm becoming friends with the character, getting to know them. And that happened this time for sure. I was sad to see him go at the end and really wanted to know more about his life and what he was going to be doing once we parted ways. It's a really mysterious, kind of mystical, magical story about a person who is trapped in a strange world that's made up of many, many rooms through which tides rise and fall and that are populated by a variety of strange and interesting statues. The writing is so beautiful and so contemplative, but there's also an element of suspense and mystery and danger that keeps you going farther and farther through the story. And then the pace, which is a little slow at the beginning, really starts to pick up. And then all of the different aspects of the mystery start unraveling. And there are some really good reveals toward the end. I highly recommend that book as well. I'm almost always either reading or listening to books by Agatha Christie. She will always be one of my top favorite authors. And this month I listened to audiobooks of Crooked House and Endless Night, both of which are novellas by Christie, and both of them were narrated by Hugh Fraser, one of my favorite Christie narrators, who played Hastings so wonderfully in the Poirot BBC series. Neither one of these stories is one of my favorite Christie's, but both of them were very entertaining. They were both more on the thriller side than the mystery side. There definitely was the murder mystery detective aspect to it, but there was also this sense of danger and evil and unraveling situations and people exploring the dark side of human nature. I had seen a televised adaptation of Endless Night on the Marvel series that I liked, but wasn't one of my preferred episodes. 
but I found that I enjoyed the book quite a bit more than I did the episode, and that doesn't always happen. Miss Marple isn't actually part of the original story. She was just written in as part of the TV adaptation of it. There are a few books that I am currently reading and I pick up kind of off and on. One of them is another Sanderson. It's The Way of Kings, which is book one of the Stormlight Archive. This is actually a reread for me. I am trying to go through the Stormlight Archive again before the next book comes out. And I am really enjoying it, even though I read it not that long ago. One of the reasons I think is that I am listening to the audiobook and that makes it feel a little bit different. But also, I just really love the characters. I just barely started another book on Kindle called The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I don't have a lot to say about this one yet. It does seem promising, and I will check back with you later about how well I liked it or not. Also on Kindle, I have been reading the Shetland series by Anne Cleves, and currently I am on book two. It's called White Nights. I really love the Shetland television series, which is ongoing. The books have been a little bit harder for me to get through. They're great stories, but I got kind of used to the faster pace of the TV series, and I think that is making me have a hard time getting through the slower pace of the books. I've also been reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This one I am farther into. I really like this book. I am a gamer. Everyone in my family pretty much games and is interested in game development. So this book has been particularly interesting in that regard. It's about a group of three friends who have developed a game that made a really big splash. And it's told from a variety of different time periods. We get some of their growing up years, some of the years in which they were developing the game and growing in their relationships with each other. And then from the future, looking back once they've been successful and talking about their past selves. That aspect of it I found really fascinating as well. Last but not least, I'm almost always reading at least one nonfiction book. And right now I'm reading a really great book that was recommended by my friend Nora. It's called How to Keep House While Drowning by Casey Davis. This one has been super helpful to me as a spicy brained person. It is a book written pretty much for everyone, but that has particular applicability to neurodivergent folks like me. One of the most hard hitting lessons from it so far for me is the key theme cleaning and keeping house and doing those kinds of chores shouldn't be seen as a moral task and that we shouldn't tie so much of our morality of our sense of self to how well we can accomplish what is not a moral task but instead a care task. I'll check back in with you on this one as well once I've finished it. Before I finish up, I want to share 
some fantastic YouTube channels that I've really been enjoying lately. The first one is a music channel. It's by a Korean DJ. She mixes tracks and puts them on her channel. The channel is called at and DJ, A N N DJ. She plays all kinds of music on the channel, primarily though it focuses on soul city pop, Japanese city pop, soul, jazz, R&B, funk, those types of genres. I highly recommend that you check her out. Those are some really good vibes. The other two channels that I have been binge watching the heck out of are two great makers and seamstresses. You might have heard of them. The first one is Rachel Maxi. She does a lot of costuming, cosplay, but also some home stuff, painting, sculpting, other really cool and nerdy projects. I really love the sincerity of her videos. She really shows all of the nitty gritty, all of the exciting things, but also the frustrating things and the, the chaos of making. And I really appreciate that. The other person that I've been watching is Morgan Donner. She is primarily a historical costumer. She does a lot in the medieval Middle Ages realm and comes up with some really, really cool projects. Many of them are uh, clothing focused, but she also does some home DIYs. Uh, she constructed a medieval style garden. She does hairstyles. I mean, it's just really, really cool. And that's it. What have you all been putting in your brains this month? Have you found any great shows or YouTube channels? Most importantly, do you have any books to recommend? I am always looking for new tomes to break open, so absolutely let me know your own recommendations in the comments below. Thank you for spending some of your springtime with me. I hope that you are welcoming April from a good place, and if not, that the warm winds and the new blooms start bringing you to that good place soon. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like, and if you want to see some more, then click subscribe so that you can see any new videos I post next. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.